This is the roundup video for Dece uh, December 2019. Um, as usual, I'm just going to run through the documentation website, uh, switching back to the software um, to show you some of the features. Um, so on the 14th of December, uh, we started by uh, further improving the vehicle inspection printout. Uh, so we added date and time stamps for the technician signatures and the authorizer signature. Uh, and we also included the checklist template name on the dual column layout. So I'll just show you how this looks. So what you can see here is we introduced, uh, I've spelt this wrong, but you get the idea. Um, we've, we've introduced the name of the checklist to the top of the inspection printouts. And we introduced the technician name, um, the type of signature. So whether it's technician or approver and the date and time. Um, so they are now available for those who want to use signatures on the vehicle inspection printouts. Uh, you can now access the vehicle inspection estimates from a vehicle card. So previously this wasn't working, but I'll just show you this now. So if I access a vehicle card, go to related, uh, vehicle inspection estimates will now open a list of the previous vehicle inspection estimates. We added the ability to add extended descriptions to compressed service packages. Uh, so from within catalogs service packages, I use the tire one as an example. Uh, if you compress the document, so um, you should know what the compressed service packages do. Now I'm not going to go into that feature, but you can actually add extended descriptions now to compressed service packages. So I'll just take a look at a job sheet as an example. And we can see on this job sheet, we have one, two, three, five, six lines on this job sheet. And you can see the top line here has an extended description. So when I print this invoice, you can see what it's actually done is hidden all of the detail because it's a compressed service package, but it, it is actually now displaying the um, extended description. So very useful if you want to be a bit more descriptive, um, especially when compressing several lines of information. Uh, we made quite some improvements to the mobile device um, for surveys. So a lot of our users in the evenings were looking at their NPS surveys coming in. Um, it was a little bit clunky. Uh, so we started by fixing a bug that didn't allow you to back out of an inspection comment once you were in there. But we also changed the layout of the um, surveys so you can actually see the promote the NPS category and the questions answered, I believe this is, uh, now from the home screen without actually having to go into the detail. So you can go straight to the detractors if you want to uh, and you can see um, straight away how many detractors they are and just go and straight and have a look at the uh, results for the NPS survey. Yeah, that's number of answers here now. Right, uh, line unit costs are now copied to the job sheet. So previously, uh, if you authorized work from an estimate and you had a unit cost on the estimate, it was not taking that cost over to the job sheet. Well, now it does for both estimates and vehicle inspection estimates. Uh, confirming a vehicle inspection and creating a VI estimate will automatically open the VI estimate. So if we just take a look at this. So I've got a red tile, I go in, I take a quick look at the inspection. Well now if I confirm it, and it asks me now, because we've obviously renamed, one of the features is we've actually renamed it from VHC to Vehicle Inspection Estimate. It will ask me if I want to essentially create an estimate based on this inspection. If I select yes, <laughs> it's warning me about the customer. Uh, and it's opening, it immediately opens an estimate for me to actually start populating uh, prices for the customer. So one of the things you probably already realized is we've renamed VHCs to vehicle inspection estimates um, completely across the system. Uh, so for example, the tiles have all been renamed, the inspections, um, not just the tiles, sorry, the documents have also been renamed as well. Um, and several other places within the system. So it was a much needed change. It's much more intuitive now. So vehicle inspection essentially becomes a vehicle inspection estimate. Uh, to coincide with some of these changes, uh, we've also updated Power BI. So I'll just 
open the app. We've introduced a couple of new reports. Uh, so we now have a report called a monthly analysis, uh, monthly trends, sorry. And this will show you your efficiency, your average values, your VI estimate authorization rate, and your percentage of vehicle inspections and percentage of vehicle inspection estimates to job sheets. So quite a simple report, just looks at some very key metrics um, and um, just allows you to look at trends. Also filterable by branch uh, and by year. We updated the VI estimate uh, the VHC report to now be VI estimate analysis and we introduced a new report called vehicle inspection analysis. So this allows you to view the number of inspections you're doing over a period of time. Um, but in an earlier release we um, added the ability to actually rank the quality of the vehicle inspection so you can add an internal score to the vehicle inspection so it introduced essentially introduces a new KPI um, to your technicians because a good quality vehicle inspection is much better for everybody, for the advisor and for the customer. So now um, you can score the inspections as they come in and then you can report on the average scores of the technicians and then have a look at the average scores over a period of time and the number of inspections over a period of time and then the scores of individual inspections as well. Uh, we reordered and renamed a few of these um, just to for more consistency between the mobile version um, and the desktop version as well. Right, okay, so let's move on. So on the 15th of December, we added the ability to send surveys manually from posted job sheets. So I'll just show you how this works. So if we go to a posted job sheet, under actions, you see now when we select a, any job sheet, we've got send customer survey. Now what this will do, it will pre-filter to a particular job sheet and it will allow us to pick the type of survey. So if we've made our own surveys, we can now send them to the customers. Uh, we can send duplicates or not. So if they've already received one, they won't receive another one. Uh, you can select date ranges uh, and particular customers. So you can just run this report and send out multiple surveys to multiple customers over date ranges and whatever type of survey that you want. So a great feature. We added a labor audit report. Uh, this is especially useful for those that run MOT stations. Um, one of DVSA's requirements is that you compare your um, MOTs that have gone through your DVSA system to your management system to make sure that you are essentially invoicing all of the MOTs and there's nothing untoward going on. So to access this from the Service Advisor Role Center under reports, additional, there is a labor audit report button. This allows you to filter dates, branches, the type of labor group, um, in most cases it will be MOT, and if you want to do individual MOT, uh, individual labor lines, and you can also do that here. I'll just show you what this report looks like. <clears throat> it essentially produces a list of labor lines, dates, document numbers, registrations, maker models, labor number, quantity, value, mileage, and technician. So again, very useful for uh, a day-end sort of process um, in making sure that your MOTs have all gone through your management system. Uh, and then finally, we've released the second generation of our online booking. I'm not going to go into too much detail because there's an extended video um, explaining this, which I'll put in the link. I'll put a link to in this in the description of this video. But I'll just very briefly show you this. Um, it's an embedded. It's, a, it's, a, it's an iframe, so it'll work with any website. It will scale as well, so I'll just start the booking process. So what it allows me to do is actually scale this down, so it works really well on mobile. <clears throat> I'll book an MOT. Oh, just another feature as well. If you have a particular page, so for example, if I go to book an MOT, instead of book online, enter my details again. It's only going to show me the MOT uh, related um, service packages to book. These are all based on service packages within the system. So if you've already got service service packages set up, it's quite easy for you to get the online booking set up. Uh, it's got a date, date and time picker. So you select a time, continue with the booking, enter your customer details. I'm not going to do this because this is actually a live system. 
And essentially what you'll end up with is a tile on your service advisor role center uh, with a booking to review. Um, so you open up the booking to review, it will give you all the booking information. It will place the allocations, even if there are multiple allocations. So let's say the book to service MOT and wheel alignment, it will create three separate allocations, uh, one job sheet, it will populate the job sheet of all the information, it will text and email the customer, it will email the branch, and then you'll get a tile here. So you just have to review the booking, and then the tile will go back to green. So again, I, I highly recommend that you watch the uh, video on the online booking because it's, it's very good, it's very clever. Uh, so that finishes off um, December uh, 2019 roundup. Um, we've got another quite a big feature releasing next month um, in January. Um, so it'll be the first major feature of 2020, which is a car sales module, uh, which the guys have been working really hard on. Um, it's really uh, close to... Uh, being finished um, so it's just in its final testing stages so if you've got any questions or any feedback on this month's roundup and um, we look forward to hearing them and yeah thanks guys